Good job. That means that you guys have learned a lot about inference and the character's motives. Awesome job. Growing up, I always enjoyed my teachers and always wanted to help people. My mom was a high school dropout, so I had to depend a lot on my teachers. So I developed big relationships with teachers and how they helped me, and I wanted to do the same thing with kids. Also, it was a guaranteed job when you get out of college. There are always schools, every place in the rural areas, and I was able to come back home to my rural area and be able to work. And I love helping children. I just love it, so that's why I'm still in the profession. In other words, why is this character acting this way? We're going to use inference. I feel like she was always like getting to know her students and she would always talk to her students and just got to know them on a personal level, which I feel is very important. Dr. Parker is really sweet. She's always there for her students. She teaches us not only school lessons, but life lessons as well. Kids learn differently. Some are auditory, some are visual, some are hands-on. Some like to work on the computer. So you have to find out where they are, what triggers them, and once you find out what triggers them, I think you can get them to learn. So of course, this basic philosophy that all kids can learn, but you have to find out how they're learning. And we're gonna do some clothes, reading, ask questions as we go along. Dr. Parker, she was really an understanding teacher. Like, if you were stuck on something, if you raise your hand, she will come to your desk and like simplify it. So like, make it shorter for you to understand and then easier. We would always review and she would make sure that everybody fully understands before we move on. And that would involve maybe playing some games just to like get it down. All right, in our mini lesson right here, has anybody ever heard of verbal irony? I'm a firm teacher and a lot of them look at me as being a mean or a strict person, but then as the year grow, they see that I just want structure and organization. So they come in and they to see how the attitude changed towards me. And by the end of the year, I'm their best teacher. and They want to hug me just like right now. My eighth graders who I had last year, they slip up here in the morning time just to give me a hug and say, I miss you. Why don't you come and teach eighth grade? So they're seeing the kids grow and just see how they just matured throughout the school year. All right, still have a few people working. She's the sweetest. She's always there when you need her. And not only for like school, but like other stuff outside of school. And she always gets to like know her students on a deeper level. Not only does she have a great teaching style, but she's a very great person. She gets to know her students. And generally, she's a great teacher. Dr. Parker was a really big impact on my English. As a former student of her class, it really helped me in like many ways, more than I could think of her. She's awesome. Being that I've been in it for 30 something years, one of my favorite thing is just seeing kids and they remember me. A lot of the professors that you're in, once you meet them or whatever, and that's it but your kids never forget you if you really were a teacher that touched your kids. And that's one of my main things I like to do with my kids, build positive relationships from day one. And that relationship lasts not only throughout that school year, but through our lifetime. Look at all those people that made 100% at the bottom down there. 94%, awesome job. You don't need to review this question because you guys matched it.